technology. Um, so just so we're all on the same page, um, civic technology is basically, uh, and it helps to enable engagement or participation of the public um, uh, for stronger development. It helps enhance citizens' communications and improve the government infrastructure and generally improving the public good. So that is, that is the goal of civic tech at an industry today. Um, so I want to talk about how virtual reality can serve to close the empathy gap between government and citizens. Um, have anyone heard of seeing the, this talk by Chris Milk? Has everyone seen it? Okay, cool. <laughs> so um, Chris Milk in, Chris Milk in 2015, um, I think, or actually probably even earlier, put together like this eight GoPro camera um, to, and followed a girl named Cedra. Um, is everyone familiar with the class for class of the Cedra African cool. <laughs> um, And uh, literally um, filmed her and watched her uh, and, and allowed her to narrate her life, taking a, taking the UN um, into her daily experiences uh, navigating a refugee camp in Syria. Um, so with this technology of immersing her story, um, UN leaders in Switzerland were able to meet Cedra um, and see what her life was like, um, and therefore impacting um, their uh, emotional ability to connect with the decisions that they were making uh, affecting that. So as a result, they really, <laughs> really, really um, embraced VR, and as a result, most recently, they partnered with HTC to throw $10 million at people <laughs> to create content that would help bring people's voices directly into the decision-making process, specifically vulnerable communities who don't normally get a place at the table. Um, so essentially, United Nations meets UX. Um, uh, which brings us to how can we adopt this at the local government level. Um, so uh, currently, right now, the way policy is adopted, the way products are developed, the way services are created, comes from um, the government's needs first. Uh, their constraints that they're working with, the requirements for the grants, um, the politics, literally the politics involved, um, creates for a pretty poor process. <laughs> uh, and by the time it gets to the people or, uh, or people's needs are considered, um, it really, really sucks um, using it. Um, case in point, like the DMV or yeah, any other government tool. <laughs> So, and as a result, as a result, it breeds distrust in terms of the public um, feeling like government isn't really caring or considerate of their experiences, um, and being that government service providers are at the front lines and exposed to the frustrations of these services and tools on a daily basis. Over time, creates an empathy gap that only widens and widens the more government and citizens interact with this poor technology, and Trump becomes president. Um, so that's something that is kind of like the worst case scenario, um, since we're here. <laughs> um, how do we prevent him from being president again? Um, so for the next election. So taking this down to the local level, uh, using San Francisco as an example, this is some of California's government leaders, the San Francisco leaders. Um, how can we connect them to the Cedras of San Francisco? Um, and maybe there is, uh, now that it's 2017, there are tools available where we can literally start following like maybe take us a, uh, a homeless guy on the street and literally follow him around and bring that his voice and his experience to the table that they're going to be discussing um, policies and decisions and or, yeah um, policy over. Um, so, <laughs> which brings me to the term of disengagement. Um, working in the public sector um, and even what we're doing now at Hope for America and our fellowship, uh, we're working with the city and we're doing a lot of interviews with government stakeholders and. Public, um, public service providers, and the term that they uh, often describe the community that they're working with is disengagement, um, calling them disengaged. Um, so when we go and see the service that they're providing or look at these events that they're putting on and watching the citizens interact with it, we see it's just a really frustrating process. So it makes sense that they're kind of disengaged from it. And in actuality, what we've also observed was that the service providers were disengaged as, as a result as well. So. I think it kind of brings, I always think of this quote by Frederick Nietzsche, um, has anyone heard of it? Whoever fights monsters should see to that in the process, he does not become a monster, and if you gaze long enough into the abyss, the abyss will get back into you. So I think that describes like what happens when so many, like, so many good intentioned people join government wanting to make a change, wanting to have an impact, but because they're constantly exposed to these frustrations on a regular basis over time, that, that will and that passion dies, and you have kind of the empathy gap in place. So how can virtual reality be used to defeat this class of conditioning? Uh, how can we 
you to improve the user experience of services by gently reminding providers that they are working with humans. And I focus on providers only because I personally believe that with great power comes great responsibility, um, said by a very wise man, um, <laughs> Spider-Man. Um, uh, and so my focus is on them. I think that's where the, the tool can have the most impact. Uh, how can we convince government that UX is vital and beneficial element in delivering service and building products? I think also this could help to serve that since it's kind of using the UN as a case of example. And eventually bursting the government stakeholders level. So them constantly interacting with each other, um, having this tool that keeps them in their comfort zone, but at the same time exposed to the stories on the ground um, kind of helps to do that. Um, so yeah, so immersive user journeys. Um, how do we do that today at the local level? Um, if you want to find people, you can go to service providers and ask people if they want to share their story and follow them around or people on the, uh, in the streets and, and, and whoever your target audience is that's going to be using the, service, uh, using the services that you're developing for. Um, and, pe and people will want to tell you. People will want to open up. They want the government to understand um, what their life is like or what their experience is using. And so if they know that, they're going to you normally be uh, accommodating to the request that you make. Um, so now that it's 2017, and not 2015, um, you can literally get a Samsung Gear, uh, instead of putting together a contraption like what Chris Milk did, you can get a Samsung Gear for 250, I think that's like overshooting it, um, borrow somebody's phone and download the app, um, and push it up to YouTube, which will automatically stitch it for you. You click the cardboard icon, put it in a uh, cardboard, which I have right here, <laughs> and you can get a, a video. So this is like an example, and I have if anyone after wants to come check it out, uh, I have it right here. <laughs> um, and literally just by pressing play, um, me and my partner, when we're developing a UX, uh, when we were doing a whiteboarding uh, user journey for the job seekers and the work that we're doing in Copa at Alaska uh, for the city, <laughs> um, we, um, yeah, so we just, we, what we did was we basically put a 360 video in the uh, camera in our room um, while we're making these decisions and drawing and sketching and all that stuff. And um, we put on YouTube for our stakeholders to be able to um, kind of be in, in the room with us and see what we're doing and understand our process. Um, we thought it was a good way of doing that. We hope to go to the next, like when we go back to Anchorage, um, we hope to eventually um, uh, we have one story that we want to start following. Uh, we worked with uh, one nonprofit called Hardest for Reentry, and they work with people who are just released with, uh, from jail, and um, they put them in housing, set them up, and try to set them up with a job immediately. Um, there's this process called that they normally do for people who are interested in working with them, where they take them on a walkthrough, where they go to where the bus stop is for where these people who are released from jail come off and literally uh, follow them to see them access all these different services around that level, uh, around that spot, and seeing the kind of pain points and friction that they go through trying to reacclimate from going to a prison environment back into the real world in those first few hours. So we're hoping to go back and um, take a 360 camera and follow them around and bring this back to the stakeholders who are interested in getting this, the re-entrance um, jobs in their cities. So. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. All righty. So those are the talks. Um, pretty good, right? Thank you so much for all the speakers here. Um, I know that I think uh, we, we sold out, but I think we are missing a few from SVBR. We, you know, they, that giant demon grabbed a few. But um, I really appreciate all of you coming here. If you're not already, join us uh, on the Facebook group. We have AR VR Design SF. If you search for that, or I did a bit lately. If that for some reason doesn't work, um, so you know, continue the, the conversation there. Obviously, it's actually kind of nice to have a small group for some of these like extended discussions. We have the space until 8.30. Um, we can go a little bit over as well, but uh, definitely by 9 o'clock, let's, let's be out of here. Um, and then a few other like housekeeping things. So we're brand new. This is our first event, and you know we're small and scrappy and try to do things simple. Uh, if you can host the next event, please let me know. My email's there, super simple, chris at purple.li. 
um, or if you can sponsor food and drinks or whatever, um, you know, we're open to whatever would make for a great event in the future. Um, another thing is that, again, we are, this is our first one, so if you have any feedback, positive or negative, please let me know. Um, one thing, kind of another note, is that uh, I really do want to make sure that any events that we do, we provide a really safe and inclusive environment for everybody. That's something that I love about the VR and AR community, is like, people are just very supportive of each other, no matter what your background is, no matter how talented you are or experienced you are, that kind of stuff. Like, nobody's an expert here, we're all trying to figure this out for ourselves. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if there's anything that we can do on um, the inclusivity front, uh, please, please directly, you know, feel free to email me and, and, um, and let me know, and I'll, I'll definitely try to take that into account. Um, if you, uh, if you identify as somebody who is not a minority here today, like, try to make it, you know, a point to amplify somebody's voice who, who might be, who might feel like a minority, um, you know, all these kinds of little things that we can do to just make sure that we are representative of the audience, really. Um, so. Just something to think about, and again, please, please feel free to shoot me an email. And then the last thing is, I've seen this done at another meetup once, and I really, really loved it. Uh, community asks. So basically, this is a time for anybody to come up, grab the microphone, and uh, if you are looking for a job, or if you are hiring,